ship would cost you anywhere from 3.5 million credits to 2,700,000 credits, a cost equal to 58 TIE Fighters, or about 5 times the cost of the Slave 1. At a length of 150 meters, or 492 feet, it was about 1 11th the length of the Imperial class Star Destroyer, and around 5 Millennium Falcons long. Alright guys, I've been working non-stop on getting all of the panel lining done, and on such a small model with so many details, there's a lot to do. So, I finally got the underside of the ship finished, and now we have to start putting the ship together. So, I just want to show you guys how many wires there are here in this kit, as there are 12 LEDs in here. Now, all of them have to be routed through this opening here, which is going to be where the stand is going to hold the model. So I've already put through all of the LEDs, the seven here for the engines, and the two for the bridge, and now we just have to put through the last four for the remaining engines. So we're going to go ahead and thread those through there, so you guys can see exactly what I'm dealing with here. If you're going to light one of these things, just get ready to have to thread a lot of needles. So we're going to just twist all of these together here, or as close as they are willing to stay. Don't want them too close because we're going to have to take it all apart when they go through. And now I have to feed them through that one little opening and Hopefully we didn't do any wiring damage because I really don't want to take this thing apart again. My first intention was to finish off all of the panel lining, but then I thought, you know what? I just can't wait to see this thing going together. All right, so we're just doing a preliminary test using our wiring here. Now that it's in the ship, we see we have our bridge lights on and here we can see that all four lights are on so half of it is working at least so let's just check the other side okay guys and here we can see that all the remaining seven engines are lit so every circuit is working the whole thing is coming together Okay, guys, well, we got everything finished up here. And all of our panel lining is done. Oh, almost all. I just realized I missed two lines here, which we'll get to that. But we have our engines completely assembled. And as you saw, everything lights up. We just have to add the radar dish and one gun underneath. And this one side piece here, once I do a little touch of painting on that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put it on its base so that I have something to hold it with because right now I don't. And we're going to do some weathering to it. And then we're going to have to uh, take it in to the paint booth and give it a nice flat coat to seal everything up. One thing I do want to mention is that I uh, went out and I bought some of these Citadel paints. Now these paints are used primarily for miniatures but I thought I would give them a try as I see some of the metallic colors are look amazing from what I've seen and I decided I was going to paint these canisters here they saw a picture of one of these Corellian Corvettes and these canisters were like a bronze ish color so I decided to try that on there just to add a little bit little splash of color 
Tool is basically just a one color model. So I painted those uh, engine components there and then I gave another little splash to the tiny little bits here. Just to give a little something, you know, to peek out from in there. And it came out really nice and that paint works really, really well. Um, I can see now why they have a big following. The color I used was Citadel Base Retributor Armor, which is from, I guess, for their Warhammer 40,000 series. But now that that's done, and the ship is all to basically all together, now we're working on the base. So I went out and I bought the most expensive and exclusive base I could at the dollar store. Actually, Ms. Onyx Fierro recommended it, and it's going to work out perfectly for what I have in mind. Which is, it's going to carry the power pack for this, which is basically a coin cell battery. It's going to be in here. Whenever it's got to be changed, you just pull it out. Boom, done. I've already drilled the hole for mounting the support rod of the ship. And here I have the support rod, which is going to be a copper rod. And right now I'm using what pretty cool tool, which is a k &S tubing cutter. I think this I got this from Hobby Lobby, I think it was. And basically you just put the tube in the tool, tighten it up to the blade, as you can see it's contacting the rod, and then you just spin it till you start to cut through. And you just keep spinning, and as every time you're doing that the rod is cutting into the tool is cutting into the rod and then you tighten it up every so often when it starts to feel like it's loosening up which is, means that it's already cut through a layer of material and you just turn and continue to cut if you don't have any other cutting tools which I do and now that I'm thinking about it <laughs> this is a quick and easy way to cut a rod these things are inexpensive to get these cutting tools they work great they just require a little time and a little effort manually but I don't know if you guys can see that it's already cutting into the pipe so let's just keep turning till we cut let's cue some music because this is gonna take a little while nice clean cut right at the end of the rod and it even bevels the edges as it cuts so you don't have a nice sharp edge to slice your hand open now basically what I'm going to do is just insert the rod into the base like so get it at the right height so that I can pull out the drawer whenever I need to such as to change the batteries. Now we're going to do a test fit of the ship on the base. What I'm going to do is start running these wires through. it will be super glued to the rod. So this is going to be our final display piece. Once we have the base painted up with all sorts of uh, 
Star Wars like trimming which we're going to be dressing it up this is going to be our display piece I think that's a good height for the ship the brass rod will be painted black and I think we're almost there with this build okay here we have a nice close-up look at the finished ship on its display base Right now you can see all the wiring inside the base because it's transparent. That's going to change. But I think I'm very happy with the final product here. And now it's just coming in time to finish the painting and the dressing. Okay guys, here we go. Back on the bench. I want to talk about some more of the detail work we're doing on this... Um, ship here the blockade runner and also we have our base already set up now I'm thinking of adding Bluetooth and a speaker to this base also so that's something that uh, may come as we progress a little further with all of this I've got the brass rod cut to fit the ship will be glued to the rod here and it'll be floating above and the base will be dressed up like some sort of a, maybe the hull of another ship. Maybe it's flying over a Star Destroyer or something. But we're going to dress it up and make it look uh, really cool. Um, and inside we'll have our power source. Our Bluetooth module. All connected to the speaker. That's probably going to be mounted somewhere around here or maybe on the sides. I haven't decided yet, but still a work in progress. What I really wanted to talk about is the detail work. As I'm right now currently doing all the paint work on the model. As you can see, I've added all sorts of rust effects, weathering to it. I've got some panel discoloration on it, some rusted panels. We're really giving it the look of something from the Star Wars universe, which is very used. And very old and just uh, something that would fit right in with the entire Star Wars theme. Now, if you can see, I've done a little bit. I've done work up to about here on the upper portion of the hole. Still have to do some on the front here. Now, let me show you what I used to make this look the way it does. I'm trying for the first time. The Mr. Weathering Color uh, Weathering Paints. Here we have Rust Orange. Here we have Grayish Brown, which I haven't actually used on this yet. And my personal favorite for this person, for this build here, is Stain Brown. Because this one, when you apply it, you can apply it light or dark. And when you do a light coating of it, it looks like rust. And then you can hit it with just small pinpoints of the paint a little more concentrated and it looks like really deep rust uh, or really you know metal that's been eaten away if you can see here I hope I hope you guys can make that out there you'll see the really darker brown parts are the little pinpoints of the rust paint and then it's surrounded by a very lighter rusty color I don't know if that's really coming through on the camera but trust me in person it looks great so basically what I do when I apply this is very similar to applying the panel line paint first we get it nice and mixed up and I'm really enjoying using these Mr. Color paints they are fantastic it's my first time using them as I said now these are oil based paints these are not uh, acrylics or um, lacquers. So they behave just like oil paints, which makes them really easy to use and very forgiving, extremely forgiving, much more than either of the other two. Now, oh, 
let me show you the one the one other item needed for this step is our weather cover color solvent this is what you're going to use to thin your uh your paint and give you the, all the different effects the light and the dark works really well at least uh i think so anyway this is the solvent now we're gonna start doing a little bit of a work here i just want to show you a little bit of what i do and uh, then we'll come back as we're getting done with it because you guys don't really want to sit here and watch me paint all these tiny little details i mean how, what fun is that you guys want to get to the part where it actually starts to look like something. So I have a few different brushes here as I'm going to use those each one to a different effect. I'm using my tiny little, what size is this brush? I have no idea what size it is, but I don't even know if you guys can see the tiny little brush head on there. This is what I'm going to use to apply the paint in tiny little areas just to get enough in there to get some paint on the body and then we're going to start cleaning it up and making it do what we wanted to do okay let's find a clean portion here oops got a little on my finger don't want that now one of the things that we also that i've also done is discolored some of the panels by adding slightly different shades of gray to each panel. Now, this is where it gets tricky. You don't want to overdo that because you don't want it to start looking like a patchwork assembly. Or for those of you guys who are TV junkies like me and remember these old TV shows, the Partridge Family Bus. You don't want that look because that's just going to look silly. So you just got to take it really easy, really careful, and apply it sparingly. If you look around the body, I have different areas where the gray panels are spread out, a few of the rusted panels, and a couple different shades of gray in there also. Now to accomplish the different shades of gray, I used my Vallejo Sky Gray mixed with a little bit of the Scalejo Black Gray. And that gave me the ability to make a couple different shades of gray which really worked out nicely for spreading gray panels around the ship. And as you can see, I've done it sparingly. Hopefully you guys can make that out. Around different areas of the ship on the top. I'm going to add some more on the bottom. But remember, I know you guys can do whatever you want to your heart's content. Make it what you want it to be. But for me, I didn't want to overdo it because I think... Like I said, it would look like the Partridge Family Bus. And I'm going to put a picture of it right here so you guys know what I'm talking about. Alright, so let's uh, take a look here and do a little bit of work. All we need is a tiny little dab of the paint. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put drops of the paint where we think rust would form. Doesn't matter if you put too much on. As I said, the oil paints are very, very forgiving. And will really work with you. I'm gonna get some in there just because that's where it's it would gather. Now, the important part is you make sure you only put it where you want it because you're going to be spreading that around. And that's what's going to give us our rust stained effect. And now, we're going to clean the brush out. Okay, you don't want too much on there. And now we're going to just work it. We want to get rid of all of the excess and just do it to till it looks good to your eye. You might find that you'll be doing quite a bit of maneuvering the paint around a bit. There we go. You can see the thinner just kind of dissolves it. 
till you get what you want. I try to think of how would paint the the rust gather on the body of this ship. Now, I know in space things don't rust, but remember this ship also lands on planets. It's not just stuck in space. So it is going to get some wear and tear. And you got to address each individual panel. Just like a real ship or a real And the tricky part is you got to keep it kind of uniform so it, the whole ship looks like it's worn evenly. It just takes a little bit of patience. And you really got to like this process to really get it done right. I really I enjoy doing this. I find it very relaxing. And I just keep going till I get exactly what I want. And I think that's what I want right there. So there you go, guys. That one little section is a good indicator of exactly how it is that I get this effect. And you just got to remember to try and keep it uniform throughout the entire ship so that it doesn't look like one spot is way darker than the other. And there we go. So I'm going to keep going with this and then I'll be back when there's a little more to show. All right, guys, we're going to end this video with a quick look at the partially finished and weathered ship. I love the rusty tint that it's got now. You can see half the engines here are done and half aren't. Still have a few more sections to go as this does take quite a while to get this weathering done but I am really happy with the way it's coming out so we're gonna end this video here give you a taste of what's to come and as you can see here here's the bottom of the front of the ship which is partially done you can see the original color of the paint next to the weathered yellow brownish rusty looking old looking part of the ship so you can see what how much of an effect the weathering has on it hmm hmm maybe I'll get another one and build a pristine version of the ship we have the different color panels Overall, I'm really happy with the way this is coming out and the way these Mr. Weathering paints are working. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. And I guess this series is going on a little longer than I expected because I really thought it would be, I would be at the final episode by now, but there's just so much that I want to do with this thing. And then I'm just going to take my time with it and bring you guys along step by step, every little bit that I, uh, I'm putting myself through with this thing. And I think I have decided that I am going to put a Bluetooth speaker in the base to 
have audio effects to go along with the ship. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go and leave it at that, and I guess I will see you guys in the next chapter where we'll have the f finished, the ship completely finished, all the paint, all the other, all the remaining parts put on it. We'll have the engines opened up, removing all the plugs from the engine so that we don't get any paint inside. And uh, we'll be concentrating on working on the base. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one.